so I've just been let go from a job that it's already meant like the world to me. So you're firing me over because I have it because I'm on TikTok or I don't understand. I don't see why you would want to represent yourself the way you have been online and you certainly uh, will not be representing our company with uh, your behavior online. So do you have any questions? Um, so is this just like a company cut you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just like a little confused because why put the listing on if you don't have like the budget for the role? because I like uprooted my life to move over here. And now my job is getting eliminated after three months. All right, poor people, I'm back. That's right, <laughs> here to provide you my worldly wisdom on how to become successful, okay. make some serious money out here. And the first thing to understand is, whatever it is you're doing, just stop. What? Right, you may have noticed I've stopped. Mm. I've stopped doing anything productive. Over the past few months, I haven't released a mm. single video. Because I just realized that it's just totally pointless to try to do anything nowadays when the government is printing. That I do agree with. Uh, I've been in somewhat of a funk. I get into these funks, what, maybe two, maybe three days where I just do not want to do anything. And after a while, you know, I get charged back and then I come back and then I start posting again. And now I feel like I'm somewhat a little bit back in my rhythm but yes it has been very just watching a lot of TikTok and looking at a lot of uh news i've been very depressed this is the most humbled i've ever felt in my life i'm literally holding resumes a stack of them so that i can go in person to places and say are you guys hiring <laughs> It's honestly a little bit embarrassing because I'm literally applying for like minimum wage jobs and some of them are being like we're not hiring and it's like what this is not what I expected I graduated college with two degrees in communications and acting I speak three languages oh this sucks like I I just want to be a tiktoker if I'm being so for real with you but I can't be delusional anymore. Like I literally need to make money. So I'm just gonna keep trying. Uh, just thinking of like the state of the world where we are right now, cause nothing really looks optimistic if I'm being honest. And the way that I view it, like what in 10 years, we're, everyone is gonna lose their jobs. Uh, so robots are gonna take over. So I'm like, I'm also trying to figure out where I'm gonna be in 10 years and what I'm gonna be doing. Trading massive amounts of money, right? Like you're out here trying to earn your dough and then the government is just printing billions, trillions of dollars out there, just making this money out of thin air to dilute your work. They're just extracting all of your value. So why even bother? Why try? It's a lot like being on the Titanic and then trying to study Java while the ship is sinking or rearranging <laughs> chairs, doing your lead code and just stop. <laughs> Right, just stop it's over uh, i know we all feel this need to try to be productive work hard hustle grind we're addicted to the pain the struggle uh, of putting in the hard work but sometimes you mistake motion for action and in this world of adhd the best thing you can do the contrarian move is to just do nothing mm. just stop moving can anybody just do that hold still because the more you move, the more energy you're going to waste and the faster you're going to die. You're wasting your own resources out here. You're gonna to have to pay more for food. I'm just gonna film this because like, this is just like ridiculous now. You're saying that, you, you're basically saying, okay, yeah, for me to get out, why? Because you're late. Yeah, yeah, I'm late by like 10 minutes, okay, yeah? But no, he was 15 minutes late. I yeah, got it timed. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, you got me timed the fingers, yeah? Yes. One, okay, yeah, it's the first time I've ever been late. Two, I, I've been here a whole year, a whole year. Right. I, I messaged you an hour ago saying, hey, I'm gonna be late because there's traffic. There was an accident on the way here. It's not my fault, there's traffic, is there? Well, work starts at nine, so therefore you need to be here. Regardless of traffic, you should have left earlier. But I, did, I left an hour ago. Yeah, I texted you at eight in the morning saying, hey, there's traffic, yeah? 
I'm going to be late. No, I sent I no. sent you a picture. I sent I sent you a picture of the traffic, and now you're over here, yeah, saying that get out. Like get. I've been here for a year. You can't just tell me to get out. That's rude. Well, I can because your shift starts at nine o'clock. It yeah, is now twenty past nine. You said this. Yeah, traffic. because like you brought me like I got here maybe about nine oh eight or something like that. I don't know yet. But it's yeah. just twenty past nine now because like we've been here, yeah. And you're and, and like you asked me what happened and I told you what happened, but I even texted you an hour ago saying there's an accident. Yeah. How how is that accident my fault? I would have actually been here work on time about eight thirty, eight forty, yeah, twenty twenty, thirty minutes before. I'm usually always before work starts, I'm here. Yeah, but you're the not one, today, are you? Yeah, but the one time, but the one time, but one occasion I'm I'm 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late, even 20 minutes late, yeah? But I told you an hour ago, yeah? Over an hour ago, eight in the morning, yeah? I text you, yeah? Around 8.03, yeah? Saying, hey, like, there's traffic on the way, there's an accident, I'm running late. Well, it's just unacceptable. I'm, I'm sorry, but yeah, it but, yeah, is. but, okay, can, can you explain to me, how is that accident my fault? Well, okay, I take the accident, isn't but you being late for work is. You should take responsibility of being in work on time, but and on time is nine o'clock. Do I not always come here early? Well, yes you do. But maybe you should have looked at traffic before you come. So you may be wondering what's new. Nothing. Absolutely nothing is new around here. I've been sitting around doing nothing, just staring at the blank screen all day. Because there's no work to do, really, except to just wait. I'm waiting for Bitcoin to get to a million dollars, actually, because it's my only salvation around here. It's the only thing that can save me. And I've recognized that fact, whereas you have not. Many people have not. And they're still out there pretending, trying to struggle, trying to do something just to keep themselves busy. A degree nowadays is useless. It is 100% useless. So it's like, it's literally you just going into debt, just for the fun of it. Can anyone explain to me how I have two degrees I have two degrees. Oh, and a certificate. A little extra, right? I have a certificate. May not, may not be a master's, but it's something extra, along with the two degrees, you know? <laughs> I'm trying to apply for jobs right now, and um, the thing is, is that the only person I have responding to me is a man from a tech, um, from a tech company saying, hey, you want to answer some customer service problems? You want to answer some customer service calls? No, Bart, I don't want to answer your calls. No, so, no offense, but I'm a little more qualified than to just, just to be sitting around answering your customer service calls. Bart, okay? I'm sorry, but that's the, but Bart is the only one who's responding to me. So what am I supposed to do? And you know, I'm looking down at these and I'm looking at them and I'm, I'm kind of wondering, I'm like, hmm, what was this for again? Oh, I don't know. The most important thing when you're sinking on the Titanic ship is really your positioning. You want to get to a life raft, if at all possible, because the whole ship is done. And look, I get it. I've been gone for a while. And you may be under the impression that I've just been slacking off around here with the lack of any new video content. You may think that I've just been hiking the Hawaiian islands, going on Mexican cruises, or exploring Japan like I am now. And, well, I suppose you would be right. The more wealthier you become, the more isolated you become. This is something which I'm starting to notice right now. It's like you talk to your friends and they're all working. They all have their jobs. And you're like, oh, you wanna do something? No, I can't. Because their nine to five is eating up their whole day. It's very interesting being here right now, sitting here filming YouTube videos. Sometimes the best thing to do is to just do nothing. And yes, that is considered to work as well. It's not about how hard you work, but about how smart you work. Don't be addicted to your own pain and suffering. It is not required and certainly not a prerequisite to success by any means. In fact, the path to success is often fun and easy. Have you ever noticed how everyone seems to tell you to work hard, grind harder, put in the hours, wake up early, but nobody ever tells you what to actually work on, except to maybe go to the gym and somehow this is going to make you successful because nobody knows what to actually do there's nothing to do there's no actual work for anyone to do around here what do you want me to do build you a little <laughs> app some little stupid mini game in-game monetization oh. microtransactions you want me to make you a blog and this idea of work was really a figment of the last era but hard work never equals success i worked 107 hours and only four of those counted for overtime
and they just fired me saying that I do not know how to utilize utilize time and that time is being wasted. But the best part is that the owners couldn't even do it themselves. They had this new girl from our competitor come in and fire me. And that's it. And they said, you can't come back. And I have gotten them over 120 clients in the past couple of months. And I'm done. Like, I'm not allowed to go back. And that was the reason, which is not true at all. I'm so angry. And it was because I asked them to give their employees a dollar raise. Apparently, that's me stirring the pot. So I'm not. I'm not happy right now. And I told them that I wanted to meet with them in person. So that's going to happen. And we'll see how it goes because I'm bringing all of the numbers with me. So I started a new job on Wednesday. It's Friday. And I really liked it and it was going really well. It's in the suburbs and it's like 20 minutes away from my house. So I've been leaving really early and trying to time it. Obviously, I'm normally really punctual. I, I don't show up late, you know, especially like at a new job. I'm, I'm a good employee and I forgot my phone at home today. So I had to go back and grab it. I was freaking out because I was looking at the clock and I was like, fuck. I'm supposed to be there at 8.30 and I got there at 8.32 and was at my desk at 8.32. It's an open floor and the boss looked at me and said, you can't be late in your first week, you're fired. And I thought he was joking because it's a super chill lax environment like he would fuck around with people and i was like you're joking like i literally my first instinct was that it was a joke i'm not kidding and he wasn't joking you see i know you i understand you you programmer tech bros out there disgusting know it all scumbags we're the same Actually, we're not. I'm way better. <laughs> the world is now flooded with computer science degrees. Yeah. Everyone's got one. I think computer science graduates have tripled within the last decade, and companies are now laying everybody off because they just don't need these useless degrees anymore. And what's really happened, actually, is we've moved on from the knowledge economy. Rationality, <laughs> merit, science, none of these things really matter anymore in today's era. Actually, we're entering this post-science, late-stage capitalism era where uh, mostly it's just about power. If you have power, then you get what you want and screw the science, right? Ignore that. You can manipulate the data. By now, people have realized how to game the system in order to achieve the results that they desire. And beyond that, what's really happened is I believe we have reached peak technology, mm. actually. We invented what is essentially digital drugs, digital opioids, which is like short form video <laughs> TikToks. And that has really obsoleted the need for any future technology. Okay, guys, do you guys think that we are at the peak or do you think that something else is going to come to just revolutionize like our society? People don't need any more apps or games when they've become couch potatoes. Mm. What more do digital drug addicts need? After all, they're totally content stewing in front of their videos. <laughs> and these short videos and TikToks really provide people with everything. They tell them how to think, yeah. what to do, where to go, what to buy. Mm. And so what's happened is even with something as innovative as Apple's Vision Pro mm. VR goggles, with all of that technology, Nobody even cares anymore. The number one skill is your ability to gain attention, right? To draw attention in this world. And if you're able to do that, you'll be able to succeed in the new attention economy. If you can't, if all you know is some STEM degree, right? Science or something, then you're going to fail. Nobody cares about that. I remember when I was younger, I created an app and I was so happy because it took me six months. And I remember as... I'm about to launch this app. I'm thinking, okay, I need promotion. So I went to this influencer and I had to pay him. And I didn't really understand because I was the one which created the app. And I was like, why do I have to pay this guy, which has done practically nothing in order for him to talk about my app. So I had to pay this person. And I was so frustrated by that, but it really made me realize how important it is to have some form of what 
like social media presence. Nobody cares about the science, it's totally fabricated. Nobody believes any of the science or data or any of the research papers. Science has become a means of manipulation. Just trust the science. And yet there have even been recent reports of 11,000 peer reviewed scientific papers being retracted oh my God. as science has faced an existential crisis more than 70% of researchers have tried and failed to reproduce another scientist's experiments. Mm. And if you want to truly understand the extent to which science is fabricated, you can check out The Real Anthony Fauci by RFK Jr. is this book that actually claims the entire HIV industry was fabricated to fund Dr. Fauci's little political games and corporate interests in order to fund the money to his friends. What matters more in this world isn't the data, but Instead, it's having some big influential celebrity mm. voicing an opinion and whatever that opinion is becomes truth. It becomes fact. And so that's why the little computer program you're working on out there, the little app or website or whatever stupid thing you're coding <laughs> is going to be totally ignored and nobody even cares. You see, what people should do is just relax and sit back like me. You could work, but you're going to get laid off one way or another. Tesla laying off sure. another 7,000 people reportedly starting in June. What these companies do is first they hire you and then they burn and churn. They threaten to fire you, making you work evenings and weekends, extracting maximum value, milking you for everything that you've got. And then you get fired one way or another in the end and you lose the equity that you may have been building into that company. They just say, hey, you know what? We don't need you anymore. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Bye. And this is what happened to me as well, guys. I was working at this place before and I really put in my heart and soul right to this nine to five and i i was flourishing i was the best employee but at the end of the day i was the first one to go so the nine to five isn't really my thing something that i would have never expected to happen to me ended up happening to me so i finally got a job after being unemployed for six months and just being put through the ringer and facing rejection after rejection and being this close so many times I finally got a job that I was excited about and I was passionate about it. The weirdest thing is, is that after I get off this call of them telling me that I got the job, I was with my mom and I told her that I have this weird feeling in my gut that it's going to be taken away from me. And little do you know, three days later, I get an email from the company saying that they are rescinding the offer. So at this point, like any human does, I am throwing myself the biggest pity party on this planet. I'm sending out invites to my friends and my family. The invites are stamped with tears and I just fall into this super dark place that I've been in before. And after facing so much disappointment and rejection, I have learned and mastered the skills of having inner strength both here and up here and to be able to pull myself out of these dark places and to dust myself off and try again. I, I never thought I would be 36 years old with, yeah, two an um, undergraduate degree from a UC school and a master's degree and legitimately unemployable. Um, yes, I slowed down my career in real estate the last six years to raise my kids. And that seems like I'm now like, it doesn't matter. And I know that I took time off and that's on me, but it shouldn't mean that I can't even get a job anywhere. Like, why did I go to school? Why did I try so hard through high school to get into a good college? And then I worked my ass off in graduate school because I really enjoyed what I was finally learning and basically all to be told like I should have done something else when I'm like unemployable it's just really and there's only one way left for anybody to make money around here and it is good old-fashioned classic and this is my favorite scamming and so we have fees convenience <laughs> fees tips tips upon tips 20% yeah. tips 30% tips Hey, just give more. Inventing wars. There are GoFundMes and charity donations for fake diseases like people pretending they have cancer. Dark patterns everywhere. Notice how every single iPad app is a monthly recurring subscription. There are credit card fees everywhere, speeding tickets for even going five miles per hour over the speed limit. They're not actually protecting the roads. They're not making anyone safer. It's just there to collect money for the government. That's what they're doing out there. 
taxes going up without any apparent upgrades to any of the infrastructure. You've got hospital bill scams, insurance bill scams, HOA housing bill scams. Like with the HOA, sometimes you're paying thousands of dollars and there's there's no service. There's not even a yard. There's no amenities, nothing. And what what is this HOA fee for? Oh yeah, right. They're scamming you. And you have to remember all of this is because we're in a stagnant economy. There is zero productivity and whatever you're doing out there for your line of work, you just got to keep in mind it's not productive. And if you want more proof that there's just no more work to be done and we have reached a stage of zero productivity, just look at Apple. We just completed one of the largest buybacks in history where they had so much excessive cash they didn't know what to do with the money. They couldn't find anything worth investing in, nothing worth research and development in. They didn't need to hire anybody. They just took that money and bought back their own stock. And I'll tell you what they probably should have done with that excess cash is just buy some Bitcoin with it. There was another company, some medical company, Simler Scientific, which they took their cash reserves, put into Bitcoin, their stock went up 28% right away. When we take a look at the overall tech landscape, the metaverse failed, Web3 failed. You know, these could have been entire massive revolutionary industries that would have employed huge swaths of Americans out there. The whole industry was shut down by regulation. And so after that, we were eventually thrown back into the Web 2.0 era, a blast from the past of mobile apps, oversaturated, tired old apps. And there's just no more opportunity there. Not only are consumers tired of these apps and they're vegetating on videos already, but all of the APIs and data that these third-party apps would traditionally have relied on in order to provide services are now being shut down and blocked off for AI, mm. right? No company wants to release their AI data anymore to anybody. And so nowadays, almost every single API is shut down and siloed off from one another to prevent the AI data scraping, thus incapacitating most third-party apps in the process. Now, some people are going to say, well, there's AI at least, right? There was a recent tweet by Meta's chief AI scientist who said, don't work on LLM. This is in the hands of large companies. There's nothing you can bring to the table. He says, maybe instead you should work on some other next gen AI system that lifts some limitation of LLMs. So I guess there's some opportunity there if you think you can bring about the next revolution of AI. Maybe get a PhD in that first. Another major headwind in tech worth mentioning has been deglobalization where the world is starting to split into separate factions. And so whereas in the past, tech companies had global reach. Today, most tech companies have had their reach actively being blocked by other countries. Mm. Russia, China, the BRICS nations have raised their own digital firewalls. Tech companies are just not as profitable as they used to be as they're now becoming domestic local companies. In conclusion, some errors are just bad. Sometimes you just can't make money. The rich get richer, the poor get poor. Tech is done. The STEM degree is done. Merit is done. We're nowadays working is like swimming upstream against the inflation and printing machine. This is exactly what I was talking about. Like everything is done right now. And I don't really think people really understand what is going on. I think they're still stuck in the bubble and they're still hoping that it doesn't really pop. And I'm just like, there's no way that the governments can continue printing that much money without it having a severe effect on the world. I think the problem is the rich became so greedy that they forgot rule number one. And that's at least leave enough food for the middle class so that they can at least what buy into the dream. So I got fired today. Um, I'm shocked. I literally just finished making my coffee to like process because <laughs> let me get it. Mm -hmm. I'm just like so confused. Like it wasn't me. Um, basically a little about me. I work in human resources and my company was acquired by a new company. I'm part of the human resources team. There's been revenue issues. They were just downsizing. So getting rid of all unnecessary positions. Now, the funny thing is, is like, I was working for a company where in March of 2020, because of COVID, they were just like getting rid of all like, quote, unnecessary roles to save money because nobody knew what COVID was. Flash forward to like mid end of year, I get rehired on a part-time basis, then full-time basis. Now go to this year, we get, a com we get acquired by the company that I'm currently at, which is based in California. I was originally working in New York and I come on. I've been there for about six months. My husband and I just moved to California. Hold on, I gotta put this down. 
my husband and I just moved to California. He left his job as a PT in New York, so he's unemployed. And we move in with my mom. I'm like, I'll work, we'll save money, it'll be great. And now I'm unemployed. Now this may be difficult, especially for those who have spent the majority of their childhood trained to be some 9 to 5 wage slave indoctrinated into the school education system. And even more weirdly, many of these people, perhaps including you yourself, still aspire to be some top tier wage slave, climbing that corporate ladder in order to achieve some fancy title or that corner office or that suit. But you've just got to give that dream up if you want to succeed in the new world. The second consideration is we're no longer in a knowledge economy or anything science-based. We are in an attention economy, media-based. Most apps these days have already been replaced by influencers, content, video. And I'll tell you something, AI is not going to succeed as well, in my opinion, in the world of influencers because fundamentally there's no right or wrong answer. We don't live in an objective world, and so the right answer is whatever your favorite influencer or content creator tells you is the right answer. Whatever they tell you to buy, how to live, how to think, that is what you will listen to. You're not going to listen to ChatGPT. I mean, when you think about it, nobody even pays for ChatGPT premium. They're starting to give that stuff out for free. And then the last suggestion, consider taking up a job as a Bitcoiner. Hey, it's not easy and it's not for everyone to diamond hand and huddle all day long. It can be pretty tiring and tough, boring work. But it turns out the more you study Bitcoin, the more serious you become at it, the more you're willing to hold and the higher your profits will be too. Or your losses. All right. Anyways, I got to get back to work. Got some more huddling to do. See you in the next one. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts when it comes to the future and what is going to happen when it comes to the job market.